All right, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna be going over this kilowatt meter. I have a kilowatt easy meter. There's a couple of different ones out there. You can buy on off of Amazon or maybe you can get it at Lowe's. Just make sure you buy the kilowatt easy. I'll put a link to this down in the description if you wanna check this one out, the exact same one I got. Because if you get the wrong one, you're not. it's not gonna calculate your, your hours, days, weeks, and months, and years in this machine. You'll have to do that by yourself. You can use this meter on your, your TV, your DVD player, a computer, anything in your house just to see how much electricity you're using on that certain device. I plan on making a video on this Harman pellet stove on how much electricity it uses on like a low setting or how much it uses on a high setting. And I also plan on doing a video on this pool pump because I have a high and a low setting to see what kind of electricity this costs me, say per week or per month. All right, I'm gonna go over this a little bit, show you how this works, tell you some of the specs on it. This kilowatt meter can be used on 120 volts, which is any normal household in America anyway. And if you live in Europe, you're gonna to have to buy something different. And it, is, it goes up to 15 amp max, which mostly everything in your house is probably going to be under 15 amps. Now, if you try to go out into your garage and plug this into maybe say a table saw or something, maybe a table saw could be a, above 15 amps. And pretty much everything in your house also, like I said, is going to be at 120 volts. A couple things that might not be would be your, maybe if you have an electric clothes dryer or a hot water heater, which your hot water heater is probably going to be you're not going to plug your hot water heater in, so you wouldn't be able to plug it into this anyway. But those are probably the only couple things in your house that would be over 120 volt. I have seen in some of the comments people said they were, um, that they melted these things by plugging stuff into them. And I'm going to guess it's because whatever they plugged into this was a little higher amps, and maybe they left it plugged into that certain device for a long period of time and it ended up melting this like this you're going to see i'll show you how many amps this is and how you can see on this de device normally you can look here but mine for some reason doesn't tell me how many amps this is it says how many watt it goes up to and how many volts it is which that's normal household 120 60 hertz that's normal in america doesn't have the amps so I'm just gonna plug it in and show you how many amps that it draws which a little electric heater like this is gonna draw a lot of watts and a lot of amps but I wouldn't recommend leaving this plugged in for like a week at a time some things maybe like your TV or a computer or if you want to plug in like a TV a game machine like a PlayStation and a surround sound that my kids are on like all the time you could leave it plugged into that and see how much electricity it uses every week. All right, another thing this is gonna show you is if a, one of your devices has what they call phantom power or some people call it vampire power, which is pretty much that your TV or your DVD player, your cable box is always pulling electricity no matter if you turn it off or not. I'll show you that on mine when I take this upstairs. All right, if you do buy this thing, you're gonna to wanna to put what you pay for kilowatt per hour. So that way it can calculate how much electricity you're using on a certain device that you plug into this. That's why I said to get buy this one because it's nice because you can put that into it. And once you put that in there, you won't have to, if you unplug this, it'll stay in there. If you get your bill, and I'll put a copy of this on the screen. If you get your bill, your bill should say, like mine says here on the front, I pay seven cents per kilowatt hour, which that's close to right. And then I look at my bill over here and it actually has a distribution charge, transmission charge, and generation charge. So if you add all them up, mine adds up to pretty much 0.11 or 0.1155 kilowatt per hour so about 11 cents per kilowatt hour I mean unless you want to add these two up and then you don't you could tell your your electric company 
they, they don't need to distribute it to your house and you could just go pick some of your electricity up in the back of your truck. Yeah, if you know how to do that, let me know. Maybe you could get about 100 different batteries and put all of the electricity in some batteries. I don't know. But I, I actually called PP&L just to make sure I had this correct. So I added them all up and that's what it come up to be. Plus this 1794 for, I don't know, customer charge. Let's put in my rate, which I said is 11 point five five so so I pushed menu till I got to rate there's rate let's push set hold that now it's blinking now let's go up I guess I'm gonna to go to eleven point five Ooh. and push set Let's check it. 11 point, or that would be 11. Yeah, that's 11, about 11 cents, a little over that. Let's see everything else. There's kilowatt per hour. This tells you how much time that this has been plugged in. You can reset that too, like this. Let's hold your reset button in. Reset. Now it should say. zero there time is zero now volts I'm not sure what PF is Hertz like I said is normally 660 volts watts amps all right let's try it out on this little heater let's re make sure this is reset reset let go all right, plug this in I'm going to go to the amps because that way I'll show you how many amps this thing draws. There's volts, amps. AMP is amps. Now let's turn this on. You got to wait a second. There you go. Now that's just the fan on that. That's only that's drawing less than one amp. So that's good. Since I said your max. Max for this is 15 amps. So let's go up to, now we got heat blowing out. Now it's at four amps, five amps. Now let's see how many watts. There's what, oh there it is. 762, 763 watt. Now we'll go up to high. Now it's 14, 1400 watt. Like here, look at the amps on this now. It's 12, it's pretty close to 15. So I don't think I would recommend leaving that plugged in there for a week or something. I mean, it says you can, but. All right, let me leave this plugged in. Let, I'm gonna let this plugged in for a half an hour and we'll come back and check this and see how much this takes, see how much this little heater costs me per hour on high. So you can look at that just like that, but you're better, better off letting it plugged in for an hour or two to give you a better estimate. Oh, and if you're gonna do it like I'm doing it, have it plugged into a, this extension cord, make sure you have a good extension cord, not, Not an extension cord like this. This is a really cheap extension cord. I'll put a good extension cord, a good like five or ten footer down in the description. All right, there's 30 minutes. Now let's turn it off. It'll hold all the information in here even if I unplug it. Even if I take unplug this and put it plug it back in, everything will stay in there until until I reset it. So let's see what this cost. Oh, it's 31 minutes now because it's still plugged in. <clears throat> this thing only works if it's plugged in though. So let's we see what this cost. There, I've used total of eight cents, 
which don't sound too bad until you go to per hour it is 15 cents per hour if you would run this thing all day long it's three dollars and seventy two cents if you run that all week twenty five dollars a week hundred and ten dollars a month and if you live in Antarctica and you want to take this little heater to heat your house in Antarctica if you have a really small house it's only going to cost you one thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars a year all right let's reset this and I'll go show you some phantom or vampire power like I was talking about reset now she is reset cost zero my see time is zero all right let me show you some of this vampire power or phantom power that I was talking about now this is my Roku player a DVD player and just my TV I don't have a cable box like I said I think they, they, I've heard rumors that these cable boxes use a lot of electricity even when you think they're off let me plug this I'm just going to plug this power strip in because it's going to show you what I normally have or it's going to show you how much power that I draw with everything off let me let that settle in a little bit let's go to watts there everything is off and I'm pulling three three point seven three point six four about four watts now that pulls that all the time pretty much every, even when this stuff's off here I'll show you everything's off if you don't believe me TV's off that's what that little red light means my DVD player is off and the Roku player is off so you'll see a little light blinking but that's just how it is all the time even when it's off so something here still pulls electricity so I'm gonna let this plugged in for a little while and we'll just see how much this costs me every year with everything completely off like I said you can do that with this or I think it's going to be neat. I want to do it myself. I'm not going to do it for you guys, but I'm going to plug it in maybe to my kids' little game machine and TV. And there's a little surround sound on that that they use every day. And let it plugged into that for a week just to see what that costs me approximately for a year. Now, when you do that, they'll be able to still turn the TV on and off like normal. And it will stay in here. Everything stays in here until you reset it. So let me let this plugged in for about a half an hour and we'll come back and see how much this costs. All right, it's been 31 minutes. Let's see how much power this uses without even turning it on. Now, per week, I pay seven cents a week to never turn my TV ever on. I guess this doesn't look like that much, but Every year I got to spend about four bucks without ever turning that on. But like I said, I wish I had a cable box because I heard the cable boxes are really bad. I'd like to see what a cable box is. I don't know. Look that up on YouTube. I think there's a couple guys on YouTube showing you how much their cable boxes cost to run when they are completely off. All right, let me go show you my smart strip. All right, this is what I call a smart strip. So I have my TV plugged into right here, which is the control outlet. Now when you turn the TV off, this smart strip senses the TV's off and everything else that is plugged into the smart strip automatically turns off. Except for these ones are here. If you want them always on, you have these two plugs that will stay always stay on. I'll put one of these down in the description. All right. Thanks a lot for watching my video. If you like this kilowatt easy meter, just check it down, check it out down in the description. And I hope you like this video. Please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I love reading all the comments. Let me know where you're from too in the comment. And hit that subscribe button to help support my channel. Thank you very much. God bless and have a great day.